Hi everybody, it's Grace with Truth Be Told with Grace and Scoshi. I'm sitting outside in this ever so humid weather in my pajamas soaking up the little bits of sun because we've had so much rain lately, which is wonderful, but also it's like, oh, enough. And um, let's talk safety. You want to talk safety? There's a lot I can talk, talk about safety. I might have to make a couple of videos. Are you being harassed by a narcissist or an abuser? Um, let's talk about some of the things you can do about that. And I'm going to use the cop narcissist because he stalked the crap out of me. He, and I never did figure out how he was doing it. But he always knew where I was, where I was going, where I had been, who I had been with. I mean, there was there was even a time that I, I got up under my own car looking for tracking devices. You know, I wiped the my com computer, got a new computer, you know, to try to... Something's biting me. Um, any spyware he might have... I mean, I just... It was just... Um, I ended up cloaking my Facebook page completely. I mean, it took forever. I went through each individual little mobile upload and picture and everything for a, a year's worth of Facebook, you know, hiding things, changing my name um, on my Facebook page, uh, deleting friends, uh, anything, any kind of mutual acquaintance or friend um, that I had. I mean, I went to great lengths and I think it's really funny because I know I said I wouldn't talk about the stroke narcissist, but part of his smear campaign is to suggest that I'm shady because I have, according to him, um, four, four different aliases. I actually have more. No, Grace is not my name, not even close. Um, why do I have that many? Because there's nutballs out there. There's Fruit Loops everywhere. <laughs> You ever done an internet search for yourself? I do that regularly. That was one thing that I started doing is, is trying to minimize my online footprint. Because you can just about find anything on somebody these days. I mean, you can tag them, look through their front door from the internet now. I mean, just, I mean, just about, you can pull up their house and, you know, you pull up, the, get their number and you can, I mean, it's just, it's crazy. I'm just finishing. I've been watching, binge watching, put her down, binge watching that show, that MTV show, Catfish, where they, you know, they try to find people who are catfishing other people. And some of the, some of the ways that they do that, you know, is, you know, pictures being tagged on Facebook, your Facebook URL. So you can change the name on your Facebook page. So it'll say, you know, Joe Schmucky Schmuck, but up at that URL, it may still have your real name up there. Did you know that? Yeah, so that's why I don't put any of my stuff out if I can help it. Because you don't know who's watching. And when you've got somebody who is targeting you, um, that cop narcissist stalked me for about six years. And it was terrifying. And he was never a violent narcissist, I'll tell you. But... Um, it was like that 80s stalker song. Every breath you take, every move you make, I'll be watching. You remember that song? I'm dating myself completely here. I get it. But uh, that's how it was. My life just wasn't even my own anymore. And he always made sure that it would get back to me that he knew. It's like for, for like six years. He just would always make sure... That I knew that he knew. You know? And he, I have a permanent order against him. It's permanent. He can't contact me directly or indirectly, which means he can't say, hey, so-and-so, go tell Grace that I said, you know, whatever, whatever. Um, so what he would do, because he's not a police officer, he spent 16 years in law enforcement, so he found ways to circumvent that. And, you know, narcissists and abusers... You know, they always have their minions and, um, you know, not trying to say, I'm, how am I going to word this? Uh, 
most of the people that he used were simple folk, you know, good old boys type thing. The good old boy network, basically. And I, I really honestly don't even think that most of them, uh, that a lot of them knew what he was up to, you know. In fact, um, once, once you know, he went through all his Facebook friends <laughs> and I had cloaked myself sufficiently and blocked enough people, he went as far as to start sending customers to my business to collect information on me. Again, all stuff you really can't even prove in a court of law, but you know, I mean, because it all followed the same exact pattern. You know, he would have these guys come and try to hit on me. Hey, girl, how you been? I haven't talked to you in forever. Where are you living now? Where are you working? You seeing anybody? What you been up to? You know, I'm like, get out of here. And it would just be, you know, every couple of months there'd be one. And I would say, I'm sorry, but I I've closed that chapter in my life. And I don't want anything to do with Tim or anybody having to do anything with Tim. And they'd be like, Oh, I don't, I'm not, I don't even talk to Tim. You know, I, I was just checking on you. Then, of course, you go to their Facebook page and they're liking each other's posts. And I mean, I, <laughs> stop, stop. Um, but it's just, you know, it was just his way of letting me know that he hadn't forgot. He was still thinking about me. And that is unnerving. We had to go to court a couple of times, and um, and I lost a couple of times, and that is so frustrating. So if you're gonna have to do something like that, let me just give you a couple little pointers here that helped me because I ended up having to get an attorney and pay a bunch of money, and I mean it was a it was a rigmarole because he was also in the Navy and he had a top secret security clearance, and so we kind of had to deal with a little Department of Defense type things and. Um, some fallout from that, and he ended up losing his security clearance, which he should. Um, anyway, blah, blah, blah. Let's not go to there. But um, when you go before a judge, you know, they don't want to hear a lot of hippity hop. They really, it's it's a processing mill. They don't really give a rat's patootie. Um, seriously, a lot of them just don't. They're just, you know, they're they're jaded. They're hardened. They're, they've just... You know, and I understand. I mean, I think if I had to sit there and listen to the things that they probably listen to every day, I'd be like, look, just spit it out. Um, but that what they want to see is, 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 is hard evidence right there, quick and easy to reference. Okay, so any type of recording that you might have done. Um, and, and, and then your text logs, they're not going to want to go through 20 miles of text logs. What they want to see, and this is how I got in trouble my first time, is that I kept arguing. I kept arguing with him. And, you know, I had about 20 pages of text logs. And I had gone through and I had highlighted that in these 20 pages of text log, I had said, please leave me alone at least um, 15 times. You know, the judge never, did, he, I don't want to see it. I'm like, but this is me telling him to leave me alone. And he's like, for 22 pages, he's like, you keep talking to him. He's not going to leave you alone. That's on you. That sucks. Because narcissists have an uncanny ability to keep you arguing. All right? Guys, if you have one that's harassing you, Tell them, you're harassing me, and I want it to stop, or I'm going to press charges against you. I feel afraid. You're frightening me. You're frightening my children. My children are afraid of you. Stay away from me. Definitive, definite, and don't argue. Don't go back and forth. Okay, they're not going to respect whatever it is you say. Okay, let's just, let's, you know, I think that's what I kept waiting for is for him to say, okay, I understand. I won't bother you anymore. And it never came. And so I just kept arguing. So then, and that's what the judge was like, well, you're just arguing with him. I'm like, but I'm telling him to leave me alone. But then you keep arguing because he keeps attacking me and he won't respect my boundaries. You know, okay. <laughs> that's how I got myself in trouble because I couldn't shut up. I know y'all have a hard time believing in that, don't you? Um, so you want to use those catchphrases. 
I feel harassed. You're harassing me. I feel afraid. My kids are afraid. Um, I'm going to press charges for harassment. You know, stuff like that. And um, another thing that you want to do. Hold on a second. <laughs> okay, this is the hardest one of all. Keep your cool. Keep your cool. And again, they are so good at pushing your buttons. And you know you're abused. And you know it's not right. And you know it's not fair. And every fiber of your being wants to just jump onto the roof and start screaming it all over the place. But if you act like a banshee, okay, he's just going to throw you in the melting pot with all the rest of the people he doesn't want to hear in that courtroom. He really is. And it's, it's just, what sucks so bad is that abuse, like, perpetuates more abuse. Like, it just makes more abuse. Because then you, it makes you a nut, you know? Like, I was just crazy for years. On edge all the time. He would prevent me from sleeping. He would start a fight every single night. Every single night. And you'll hear this when I start putting the uh, audio recordings. It's every night. I, did, I couldn't get any peace. I couldn't go to bed with peace in my mind because he would have he would have pissed me off before bed or frightened me or something. Again, he wasn't physically violent, but it just the just the constant intrusion into my life, into my brain, into my privacy was just um, it was terrifying to me. It makes you go crazy. By the time I left that relationship, and I was only with him five years, I had gained almost fifty pounds. My joints hurt, my body hurt, my mind hurt. I was on edge all the time. I was a raging B-I-T-C-H. I was, it was just, it was terrible. Nightmares. I, I just remember just, and you know, one of the reasons I think I kept arguing with him, because people were like, Grace, why don't you just block him? Because it was worse not hearing from him. At least... When he was blasting me and harassing me and wearing me out, I knew where he was here. But when I didn't hear from him, what's he thinking? What's he doing? What's he plotting next? Where is he going to show up? I think that was probably the scariest thing was not hearing from him. Yeah, that was the scariest thing for me. Not knowing where he was, what his mental state was. Had he deteriorated to the point that he might try something physical, permanent. You know, I had an escape plan for my children. I had to coach my children on an escape plan. The plan was, we had several plans depending on where we were in the house. Um, Cause he was stalking me and he was stalking Phil. If you remember Phil, my wonderful knight in shining armor was actually the one who helped get me out of that situation. He saved me, he rescued me. And while I was living with him, it really hurt my feelings. One of my viewers, by the way, got after me and she said I was man hopping. I was not man hopping. I was escaping. I'm not a man hopper. But yes, I will admit right here, right now in front of God and country that I cheated on that man. I went behind his back. I snuck off and, and I did. And it was very calculated. And um, it took months that to, to formulate the plan, the escape plan, because I, I had been trying to escape for over two years by the time I met Phil and he helped me get away. I had tried to buy a house um, to get away and he found that, you know, the narcissist found out about it and he, you know, ruined the plans to buy the house. Like, I just, he just knew everything. I, I, he just knew everything. I just could not get a moment's peace. I could not get away from him. So I had a plan with the kids. And my plan was to was to fight him off as long as I could while the kids escaped to the neighbor's house. 
I coach them on what to say. I train them on our phone numbers, our names, our numbers, the address. And then I had to tell them, I had to tell my children, when you run out that door, you don't come back. No matter what you hear in this house, you do not come back in here <sighs> it's been a long time since I visited that memory <sighs> so let's move on Documentation is very important. Don't ever delete, not even a period. You don't know when it's going to come back. You're going to need it. I had um, printed a bunch of stuff off and I had it hidden in secret files in my filing cabinet, you know, in a package labeled will, last will and testament. And I had my actual will in there, but it was hit. I mean, you know, just, the links I went to because I didn't know was he going to break in and there's all kinds of uh... I mean he had stalked Phil you know he had looked up tax records and being a police officer he had access to certain information that the general public doesn't so he knew a lot of stuff about Phil I was afraid for Phil's safety Phil put his life on the line for me and my children he's a good man I love that man to this day. We're not equally yoked, so we're not going to be together, but I will never not love that man. I'll tell you that right now. I just, I love God a whole lot more, and that's my priority now, so. Uh, but anyhow, um, he would just always let me know that he knew. Um, so this video is kind of dragging on here. I can try to talk more about this later. I just, um, safety is a big thing. And if you have someone who's stalking you and after you, um, the paranoia that ensues from that is, is just, it's really detrimental to one's mental health. So I want you to know that I have been through that. I understand that. Um, I'm going to try to talk about that and try to help you through that. And hopefully, if you do have to go to court, you'll get a decent judge and not a, an old pooty poot. Like, I, <laughs> I got several of those. And um, so I'm going to cut this for now. I got to kind of regroup. I'm, I'm a little, I've kind of triggered myself here, so... I'm feeling myself stammering and I'm feeling myself losing my concentration here. I'll leave you with a Bible verse. Uh, I think it sounds like a Proverbs, might be a Psalms, but it's the, the shrewd one sees the danger and conceals himself, uh, but the inexperienced keeps right on going and suffers the consequences. So be shrewd and conceal yourself. Take protective measures. And don't ever think, don't ever think that they won't come after you just because they haven't ever. My husband, the guy before the cop narcissist, you know, there's a, I have a video about it, but he, he attempted to murder me. Like he, he attempted to snuff out my life. Uh, so you just never know when somebody is going to snap. You just never know. And um, so please take heed. I'm Grace. Not really, but I'm Grace. And this is Truth Be Told with Grace. <laughs>